Ladies and gentlemen, this is Common Sense, the program that tries to make sense of the world around us all. Thank you for joining us, and I am thrilled to be here today to have uh, a little time with Ambassador J. William Middendorf II. Bill Middendorf is many, many wonderful things. At the bottom line, he's a Rhode Islander and a treasure for not only our state, but our nation. We're going to talk a little bit about the follow-up to an interview he gave to Pat Morgan just about a year ago. Ambassador, once again, I want to thank you for making time in your busy schedule uh, to spend uh, some time to follow up with us on some of the uh, wisdom that you uh, put before us about a year ago when you last did an interview for Common Sense. Uh, just to get some of our viewers up to speed, um, you are uh, a person who has led a long and extremely filled, full life. Uh, you have been, in my estimation, an athlete, a naval officer, an artist, a composer, an entrepreneur, politician, a diplomat, cabinet secretary, and with all of this, um, you still do uh, a watercolor or a pastel or two or three per oh, day? All these are mine. Everything you can see around. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> you are a, a prolific... That's uh, Edward Heath. I was prime minister uh, when I was secretary, and I, I asked if I could sketch him, and of course, he said, sketch me naturally. I said, all right, I'm going to put a bottle of a glass of scotch in the picture. <laughs> and there it is. There it is. <laughs> Excellent. Um, you have had experiences um, with, uh, as an athlete in the U.S. National Field Hockey Team, if I recall. Uh, you were a member of the U.S. Olympic Committee. Uh, was it as Secretary of Navy that you uh, founded the U.S. Marine Corps Marathon? Yeah. And ran in it yourself how many times? Eight, uh, eight times. Eight times. God bless. I don't recommend it for young people. <laughs> they have two knee operations. <laughs> <laughs> well, those, there could be a straight line between those two items. Um, but uh, you uh, were a student at Holy Cross, at Holy Harvard, Cross. at yeah. uh, um, business school in New York was... NYU. NYU. Uh -huh. yeah. And... Uh, and Graduate of the Year that gave me an honor. Graduate of the Year, <laughs> right. Uh, you had a career in finance on Wall Street that included yeah. a seat on the North New York Stock Exchange. Yeah. Uh, you uh, were ambassador not just to Netherlands but to the uh, to the European, not, it was the precursor to the European well, Union. It's called uh, Eco European Economic Community, and then later came the European Union. Right, and uh, and of course uh, the op the Organization of American States yeah. as well. Latin America. Yeah. So three ambassadorial assignments, and, and uh, not necessarily easy ones. I mean, there's a lot, there was a lot going on, especially in the European community and the uh, OAS. Well, OAS with, with Grenada and, mm -hmm. and the Falklands Wars and a lot of excitement there. There was drama. Mm -hmm. And, uh, of course, you were the Secretary of the Navy. Yeah. And, uh, and during that assignment, you're responsible for a number of the weapon systems that are still in use today. In fact, mainstays of the Navy, some would say. Yeah. And, uh, and so. then <clears throat> founding chair of the Defense Forum Foundation and the Monetary Research Foundation. Yeah. And, uh, and the Heritage Foundation, uh, International Republican Institute, I'm sure I could go on and on. Yeah. So um, there can be no question about your bona fides. And you're a, you're a young man with a bright future of what now, 92, 92, three? 92, 92 years of age. <laughs> well, in two weeks. <laughs> in two weeks. Okay, well, happy birthday. Um, the fact of the matter is that it's been my privilege to know a little bit more about you than many people might and to have uh, had interactions with you over the years. And so when I say you have made a spot in, our, in your schedule for us, I'm not kidding around. Uh, you get calls all the time from European and South American and American interests on matters of economics, on military and strategic policy, and uh, also on, uh, on monetary policy, do you not? Well, uh, Arthur Fiedler once told me when I was conducting the Boston Pops on a piece I'd written called Old Ironsides and, uh, from the Navy Night in the Pops, and he said, uh, I said to Arthur, you've been conducting this for 50 years, what's your secret? He says, to rest is to rot. Mm -hmm. <laughs> a, f 
a famous term from Arthur Fiedler. You've clearly uh, taken that to heart, and uh, all of us should do the same. The last time we spoke, your overriding concern for the state of our nation today was, or had to do, if I recall correctly, with a sort of a lack of strategic thinking on the part of the White House. Would you uh, agree that is that still uh, a concern of yours, and how would you elaborate? Well, the term strategic thinking, of course, is pretty broad. Uh, the, the issue is we're not uh, building the long-range weapon systems, uh, the long-lead-time weapon systems that we need for uh, for the uh, prospective uh, threat from China and Russia. Uh, North Korea and Iran uh, 10 years out. We know pretty much in, in 1992, 1975, 74 and 75 when I was secretary, uh, Admiral Rickover and Admiral Holloway and, uh, and uh, Arlie Burke and all the best brains in the Navy Department and myself, of course, uh, not, not a brain, but I mean, as a team leader, I assembled them and said, folks, uh, we know the Russians are going to have their apogee of power uh, in the late 1980s, uh, at which time, of course, they threatened to take over all of Europe and probably the world with their weapon systems. We know what they're building. And we know what we're building. We're, we've had a peace dividend after Vietnam, so we've decelerated it, so to speak. So we have to rebuild our structure so we can have modern def uh, weapon systems to offset them when we built at that time we built, because it's a 10 year lead time to build any weapon system, we built the um, Aegis missile system, the anti-missile defense, the best in the world, the uh, Trident submarine which can stay under the sea for 90 days undetected without putting up a periscope and it's the world's greatest uh, weapon system in my opinion. Uh, it can launch, uh, sea launch uh, nuclear warheads. Uh, of uh, thousands of miles and uh, undetected at sea. And uh, the F-18 uh, and uh, many other programs, there's the F-18 up there. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, many other programs and in the 19, and, and, and when we had that post-mortem uh, with the Russians in 1991 in, Mo in Moscow with the heads of their military, uh, heads of our military. Uh, we came together and they uh, told us that they admired most Ronald Reagan because he had a backbone and he went ahead and built these systems. Uh, and uh, they couldn't match us. And so you have proven in essence that strength is the way to maintain peace worldwide and you lived it as Secretary of the Navy. We're going to take a break right now uh, to end our first segment. Again, thank you very much for your insights. Uh, we'll be back in just a moment, folks. I think someone's about to ask the question, are you kidding me?